it's connected to the cloud perfect well Ana Maria what a pleasure to have you welcome 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 to this amazing interview so really really glad to have you here in this interview we're going to discuss personal development and of course how you became a coach and all that in between Ana Maria would you like to introduce yourself First of all, Nadia, thank you so much for having me. It's so wonderful to connect with you today. I'm Anna Maria. I'm Bulgarian and I've been a coach full time for three years, but I've been in the personal development realm since I was 22 and we're going to touch base on that in just a second. I just turned 30 two weeks ago. So yeah. it's been Yay. Aquarius. <laughs> Looking 15 anyway. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How we do it? How we do it? Yes. Yeah. I know. In fact, now that you said it, uh, when I was actually when I was twenty, I looked older than I look today because of the issues that I had at the time, like internal fatigue and internal and external, all of all of the stuff. So you know, I actually just gave it away. But this is how I started. I really needed to fix my own issues. And of course, when we fix ourselves, then we realize that first, we're not alone in that. Many other people have the same struggles. And B, when we realize how good it feels to feel good, and when we com can compare it to how we felt, and then like, I, at least I felt like I have the personal responsibility to share some of the things I've learned with the world. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how it started. Well, it's super exciting to have you here and to have the honor to interview you a little bit and pick your brain about how you got to this point in your life and all that. I can't wait. So shall we get started? Can I start with the questions already? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So Ana Maria, I would like to know a little bit of your story and what you did in the past up to this point that you are today, because I'm sure you had had like a transformation throughout your life. So I would like for you to elaborate on that one, if you will. Oh, absolutely. I would love that. So this is a big story and I'll give you the short version. Uh, <laughs> yes. And I'm really glad that this is happening because I've been receiving a couple of different synchronicities that are kind of reminding me to film a video where I can talk more in detail how I found my life purpose in my mid-20s. So I'm going to share a whole video about that on my, on my YouTube channel, Luna Vora Coaching. Oh, However, in this, <laughs> yes, in this interview, I'm going to give you the short version. And once upon a time, there was a girl who had a stronger relationship her, with her biological dad, and she felt unlovable. She felt lost. This affected her uh, relationship issues later on, and she developed uh, an eating disorder when she was 14. She was suicidal. She struggled with drug addiction and uh, yeah I'm gonna stop right there uh, but yes yeah uh, but this you know it's it, it it's part of my history it's as it, this is exactly what I told one of my clients yesterday it's a part of you it's not Absolutely. who you are and Absolutely. I yes and I've always felt you know uh, this is the first time I'm I'm sharing this ever um, and the reason I'm gonna share it is because I'm realizing more and more that like sharing part of my struggles may inspire someone to know that first they're not alone and yeah and b you can change so yeah. anyway yes right right yeah and by the way i'm so curious about your own story because you're also so amazing so it's so wonderful to connect with you oh, but, my. Um, <laughs> you're amazing no you you as well uh and um yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit nervous because this is the first time I'm ever talking about this uh, in public. But when I was, uh, I believe I was 12, um, I was uh, considering a suicide. Uh, I was so lost. Yeah. And uh, the reason I'm sharing this is because even though I was so young, like I was about to do it. And there was this voice in my head, like it, it came from the depths of my being, if you wish. And it, it told me, you have to live, you have a purpose. And it was so strong, you know, they call it a defining moment, even though I was still a child, but I just felt this strength and this strength helped me to uh, heal. And again, this is the short version. Of course, I went through a lot of uh, personal development, but I came to the States when I was 22 and this is how I got in, in nutrition. So first I had to deal with my uh, sugar addiction. I had this like, binge cycles and then restriction it was really horrible yeah 
And so I had to heal that. The, the, the first I wanted to fix something that was uh, like really urgent. Uh, and I had like hormonal issues and you name it. Uh, and then of course, I, as, as I started to heal my relationship to food and my body, and I started to build physical confidence, of course, it started to affect my mindset. And long story short, when I went to the University of Washington, uh, I was really curious about everything. I've always been a very curious person. And there was this course, Research Methods, that was for graduate students, but I was allowed to take it. And in, in, within this graduate uh, course, on the, uh, we learn how to con conduct um, scholarly research. So within this uh, year, I conducted um, a research that was approved by the human subjects in Seattle. So it was a, a legit research with human subjects. I interviewed them and I wanted to discover if their upbringing affects their body language, how they interact with each other, how does it affect their intimacy, especially for women? How does it affect their uh, relationship with their bodies, to their partners, to the world? So it was very interesting. And within this period, uh, I probably peer reviewed close to 1,000 books on like anything you can think of, like gender studies, uh, neuroscience, uh, dance therapy, movement therapy, um, counseling anything you can possibly think of. And I was so immersed into it. And of course I was uh, fixing my own self-talk at the time. And I worked with a mentor and that's why we all that we are in the personal development, we constantly preach about get yourself a mentor or a coach, it changes your life. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so working with my mentor, uh, who is a scholar and a dancer, and she's amazing. She's such a powerful woman. And of course this was a great uh, experience for me. And uh, I was really able to get very deep to my uh, commit commitment issues. And this is when I started doing meditation. So I was combining Eastern philosophy with journaling as a modality of self-healing with movement therapy. So this is not the short version, I guess, but anyway, no, that's okay. That's okay. I'm loving every second of it. And I'm so grateful that I'm getting to hear your story and get to know you more. <laughs> You're so amazing. Yeah, oh, everything you've shared so far. Oh, thank you, dear. But I mean, you are inspiring so many people out there that need to hear a story like yours. So I'm just so happy. So, girl, take your time. I'm here. Let's <laughs> chat. <laughs> you have amazing gift of listening. And I just want to say it because sometimes we take it for granted. And I really want to appreciate you for your ability to listen actively. It's so wonderful and so precious. My pleasure, my pleasure. How could I not with an energy like yours? <laughs> um, so anyway, so you were, saying, you were yeah. saying about after all these books and working with your mentor, then what was the next step for Ana Maria? What did you decide to do once you were working with her? Mm -hmm. So this is actually leading me to your question. I took my time with it. Uh, but yeah. uh, <laughs> when I was doing all of this, when I did the research, I mean, uh, I didn't think about doing coaching at all. I wanted to feel good about myself. That was my sole intent. And in this uh, pursuit, I also wanted to learn about different personality types. So like I said, during this time, I was researching how different people react to challenges um, like introverts, extroverts, how your culture affects your ability to cope. I was uh, researching individualistic societies. I was comparing them to collectivistic societies. So it was a very comprehensive um, conduit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, and this was my last year in school. And I had a, I had a double major in dance and international studies. Oh, it, how fun. What oh, kind yeah. of dancing? I love dancing. It is so therapeutic as well. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. I actually learned way more from my dance major than I did from my international studies, even though we were studying like crazy. Uh, <laughs> because in my dance department, we were doing creative methods. We were doing like improvisation and, and write, creative writing, like all of the modalities dance history, yeah. art history, and I'm very artistic as well. Uh, so all Beautiful. dance genres. Yeah, I've done, uh, I started with Bulgarian dance, I've done modern, of course, uh, ballet and salsa and African. And, and this is how I developed my dance uh, formats that are especially for women, because I'm sure you, you said you love dancing. So you probably 
can connect to how you know hips don't lie but it's very true like when we learn how to move the pelvis yes it, yeah it, yeah 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 it affects our ability to receive pleasure and i feel like a lot of women are deprived of their uh, ability to feel sensual because of you know there is so much stereotype about female sexuality one today um so, so anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to compress a lot of information, uh, but towards towards the end of it. So the reason I'm sharing that is like I had a double major, and before that I've studied sociology and communications. And the, the only reason I'm saying that is because I was so. I mean, my mom is absolutely amazing. I love her so much, but she's a scholar. She's like very, very well-educated. And I'm so grateful that she wanted me to be very well-educated. However, when I was, you know, in my early twenties, I was, you know, kind of following the, you know, the modality of like, you go to school, you got a good degree, right? And and I, this is another story that I want to talk about in another video but I actually this is in my undergrad I uh, started to study the law of attraction and this is how I was able to pay for my tuition and I you know I got three scholarships using the law of attraction <laughs> love that love that yes yeah, so this is a, a, another story right there but anyways so by the end of it I started to go through soul searching that I don't want to do any conventional job like nine to five, even though in the international study program was giving me so many well-paid opportunities, right? But I just knew that, first of all, my personality, I'm very freedom loving. I like being my, mo my own boss. I'm very self-reliant, self-independent. So for me, like working for myself has always been the, the, the one thing that I knew would work for me. Yeah. And the question was like, how can I work for myself and do something that gives me joy? Because I'm very connected to things that energize me. I'm a very active person. So anything, anything that was, uh, you know, like boring, I knew that I'm just not going to last. There. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you because I'm the same way. Like that nine to five, I mean, God bless those that like it and to each their own, but it's just, yeah. no, 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 you no, not me. Gracias. Thank you. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, super yeah. excited mm -hmm. so after all this uh preamble of your beautiful story <laughs> what made you go into coaching yes yes so i promise everything makes sense <laughs> yeah. i'm just excited to listen to your story i love it thank you so much um so like i said this was like towards the end of it and i was thinking to go to a grad school and become a counselor so again i was trying okay. to follow the 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 steps right like the one more degree because why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then it hit me that everything that i've done during my research creates a blueprint and i was like i i already have it like i've already seen my own transformation i was able to recover from my body dysmorphia i was i felt very confident I, I i saw what i was capable of and and this is how i started learning about neural linguistic programming and how we can change our minds and all the things so i was i didn't want to go to another uh you know you know like a two years like studying i wanted to be in the field and actually yes. practice so I'm actually almost went to a, a grad program, a graduate program for counseling. But when I went and um, I was selected, there was like a lot of um, um, a lot of um, what's the word? Mm, yeah, there were a lot of applicants. So I got, you know, a spot there and I went for the interview and something in me, like when your intuition is very against something, like I felt so out of place there. I knew that I didn't want to do that. Okay. So then. That's then, so cool. Yes, like how our intuition is telling us things. Um, so all the time, yes, it's amazing because it was the universe telling you, right? Don't go here, try something else. Mm -hmm. This yeah, is just and, not right for you at this point. So you felt it and you went with it, which is amazing. You know, a lot of people we just forget about the intuition, which we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I've been working on that too, but yeah, that's another story. You were saying, so you follow your intuition. You decided not to go to grad school. Uh, by the way, I just want to insert that this is one of the reasons uh, I feel like you and I connect so well, because I can see that you are very intuitive about your life and what gives you joy and happiness. Yay. So, yeah, it's, it's so I true. love that. Yes, so I agree happy. with you. I agree with you. We connect. I like yes. It. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And I just want to tell you something that it might sound funny, but like when I actually met you for the first time, I was like, finally, someone like me, because you know, <laughs> I have this energy that is more exuberant and I'm more exuberant. Yes. So it felt so great to actually meet someone yes. like that. <laughs> yes. It's fun. I love it. It's just focusing on what gives you joy and just making the most out of it and just ooh, enjoy it. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And I think it's also our cultures because we're, we're both from uh, uh, non-American cultures that are <laughs> innately more. <fun>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say it. Gotta say it. Gotta say it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, after this moment, um, I, uh, again, I, I kind of talked to the universe in my meditation and I said that I want to figure it out and, and just just to give you more context, this was after I finished school and I was doing multiple part-time jobs because I really wanted to figure it out. Like I didn't want to waste any time being trapped at a job I hated. So I was mm. really uh, earning enough money to pay rent and food. I didn't care. I knew that this, this is my time to pave the, my future. And, and one day I was teaching a, a dance fitness class and one of the women there said that she was working with a coach. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And I went online after this class and I, and I Googled, how can I become a coach? <laughs> and, okay, cool. Yes. So this is how it started. And the interesting thing is that um, I, again, I feel like I did that because I was still holding on on like unresolved a fear of judgment if I wasn't certified to be a coach, right? Because I, I ended up doing like a couple of different certifications in coaching. And it's so good. I mean, I did learn from it, but I also realized that most of the things I already knew, but I was still hanging out on this fear that I have to have all of these credentials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which happens a lot. Because something yes. that, I, yes, yeah. Something I realized with coaching is that honestly, nobody ever has asked me how many degrees I had. Nobody. Like people just came to me. <laughs> yes. As long as you can help them. And yeah. as long as they feel like you can help them and they can trust in you, they feel that energy that you have. They mm -hmm. want to work with you. They don't care about the certifications. You know, they don't care about the degrees. They don't care about any of that. It's like, can you help me or not? If you can, let's do it. If you can't, okay, bye. But, you know. It's so true. It's so true. And, and also not everybody is a good teacher. There are a lot of people who are very knowledgeable, but for me, it's how can you ignite someone's uh, career? Yeah. How can you wake them up? Yeah. And well, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, great question. Uh, so when I, as I was doing the, the certification, I actually got a couple of uh, practice plans and I did I ended up doing like close to 1,000 hours uh, 10,000 hours of practice amazing uh, yeah uh, this was like three now almost four years ago so the reason I'm saying that is because very often like we see someone's results and we don't know the story and somehow at least many people do it like we assume that this happened overnight and it didn't for me, it definitely took some time, but the, for me, it feels very rewarding because, uh, you know, I had a couple of moments when like uh, an investor, a male investor would like, you know, be interested in my work. And I had a couple of times when, you know, male investors would be like, you can do it alone. And I'm like, watch me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm proud to say that I built my company uh, by myself without any any further help. Not that asking for help is wrong. In fact, it's amazing. It's very, very good. But s somehow I needed to go through the hero's journey of uh, initiation. And I just needed to do it. And I, I needed to feel um, the work from the inside out. Because now I help women to find their life purpose and, and overcome the fear of showing up, overcome the fear of failure. So I had to go through all these fears myself. And there was so many times when I was, yeah, barely making enough money to cover my utilities and essentials. But again, the life purpose, because everything that I'm telling you, it's, it's centered around this unshakable belief that this is what you're going to do. This unshakable belief that you are going to figure it out and you show up every single day, you do your work, you check off your goals and you keep showing up. And when you do it day after day, day after day, the universe starts to see that you're not joking around. You actually really want it. 
and you're showing up and the universe always mirrors our intention and this is how the law of attraction works when you show up and you are in a positive vibration and that's why i love your post you on facebook when you talk about like the importance of um, i'm paraphrasing but i've seen often you talk about the importance of being in the energy field of happiness uh, yeah. as your personal responsibility and it's so true because when we feel in in a good vibration of abundance even before we get it then of course we are, we believe that anything less is unacceptable and this is how i was able to yes i love that because when you feel that you can be happy with the, like for your purpose like from yourself you really believe that happiness is a choice rather than a result that somebody else did for you then you not only claim your power right but then you feel just amazing for no reason you just claim your power to be happy and off you go. And then you're vibrating in the highest possible wavelength and then amazing things start happening to you. So it feels cool. <laughs> Yay. So That's super, super amazing. excited about that, uh, that particular part. But yes, you're so right about the, the whole being. I really love the fact that you hone in on women and find, helping them find them, their confidence and really finding that inner work that sometimes we forget about. Because mm -hmm. our bodies are libraries, right? And they've been storing all, every single uh, experience that we have had since we were born mm -hmm. is stored in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes trauma mm -hmm. is there and we don't realize it's there sometimes. Sometimes we numb it because it's easier not to look at it than to actually put the work in and whatnot. So it's amazing the work that you're doing because you're showing people, you're showing women how to build their confidence back, right? Mm -hmm. You're showing them how to work with themselves and eventually also move through and whatnot. So yay absolutely uh -huh. and you know it's so interesting that you say that because just today before the call uh, something i do for my premium packages i create my own guided meditations that use the nlp uh anchoring and i and it's so interesting because one of my uh the, my one of my most recent clients she was very impressed that she now sees her fears as information like before she was intimidated by them they were holding her back and now she understands that as i always say having fears doesn't you can be fierce while having fears and i think this is so important and that's why i do so much uh, create so much content for my social media because i want to give more information and to um show people that you have two choices to stay in denial or to understand that when you practice compassion towards your shortcomings, you understand that these shortcomings don't define you. You define yourself. And you can create a new definition of that. And that's the, that's the power of self-empowerment. Even though empowerment, yes, it's a buzzword nowadays, but I really like the word power because we yeah. women need to be reminded that I, I at least I firmly believe that women, we are so powerful and there is so much social stigma but women we are we can be you can use our sacral chakra which is the chakra for creation and sexuality and creative energy we can create things with our intuitiveness and our emotional spectrum and our ability to connect to other people like we women are so powerful and i feel like a lot of women try to be more masculine to fit in or to be taken seriously and i'm like no and this is why i started working for myself because and we both share that like i like being feminine and i also like to be masculine in my approach to my work and i like to create this balance and this is the type of women i attract that want to yeah. feel good they want to feel attractive and they also yeah. want to be a badass <laughs> yeah, absolutely and it's so important to acknowledge what you just did we both have feminine and masculine energy within us Right. Mm -hmm. It's just learning how to play with them, how to have them, the two of them just dancing together, just dancing and creating harmony. You know, the women will be the creative one and the guy, I mean, the man, the man, the, uh, sorry, the masculine energy can create maybe the framework for the women to just create. And then it's just the two of them just dancing together, like the yin and the yang. Oh, so yes. yeah. I love, I love the, the image of dance. And uh, uh, this is how I started doing couple coaching as well. I work with uh, partners, of course, it's gender neutral, but um, just so it happens, I often have like more um, traditional model. 
Uh, and it's so interesting because this is how I help them to connect to each other from this deep level of uh, the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And we both have it. So the whole idea of wholeness, when you show up as the whole and complete person, and then the other person shows up as a whole and complete person, and then bam, and this is how, you know, you can con connect to your partner on this soul level, because this is like the infinite energy of love. And it's, yes. it's the energy that helps so us powerful it's it's really powerful and love is such a beautiful energy like creole love like deep love not just for our partners but for for yourself i love that you talk about a lot like the most important relationship with yourself self-love and also love for your for your passions in life for your purpose the more love we have the, the more we raise our frequency and this affects the frequency of the planet. So it's, it's a win-win. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, I love that. The more you love yourself, the better the society becomes, right? Because it's so funny how sometimes when we're growing up, you know, they tell you not to be selfish and not to do this and not to do that. And then you start thinking that whenever you're practicing self-love, you're being selfish. Mm -hmm. And no, not really. Like you have to love yourself so you can love everybody else around you. And therefore everybody else, will love themselves as well i mean by influence but no, that's also a personal decision that's also a personal decision but yes it's so important to just love oneself you know yes. love the person in the mirror is the most important relationship one has in their own life right absolutely and also the the feeling of being enough if there is one thing that it took me the longest to unlearn was this limiting belief that i thought that i wasn't enough and uh, and I find that a lot of women still hold on that limiting belief. And I feel like we try to circumvent it. I mean, as much as I appreciate the body positivity movement, I think that is like a lacking a component there because loving yourself really has to incorporate how you nurture yourself and not just physically, but emotionally. And also to know what you deserve and to shut down the noise because ultimately there are so many ways of living your life. And you have to say, no, like there's some, it's amazing that we have so many coaches and different programs and different approaches. And it's so important to say, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. And when I say yes to myself, I'm going to honor this yes. And I'm going to be unapologetic. I'm not going to uh, second guess my decision just because there is a new trend out there. I'm going to stay true to my voice. I love that, Ana Maria. And that is so important to just go deep inside us and understand who we are and just carry on loving ourselves and just saying yes and setting, you know, those healthy boundaries. Those healthy boundaries are so important. What do you say yes and what do you say no to? You were just mentioning about the things that we consume, right? The things that, I mean, is not only physically, but also emotionally and spiritually, like the things that we consume, consume us, right? So what are we consuming? Are we consuming... Uh, maybe the music that we listen to, the, the food that we eat, the, the things that we pay, pay attention to, mm -hmm. like what are we consuming? Because that will eventually consume us. And mm -hmm. that is the biggest way to show ourselves love, right? Through the things that we consume. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot tell me that you love yourself if you're watching things that are not great for your mental health yes. or you keep blaming others for how you feel. Like, how is that self-love, you know? <laughs> but then again... Absolutely. Sometimes it's hard, right? Because I guess this these behaviors are learned. Like we don't, we're not born like that. We're born free. We're we're born free, free people, free children into mm -hmm. this world. And then society and our parents and our teachers they shape us into becoming this uh, this person. So we start believing all these things that they told us when we were little. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. Mm -hmm. I love the word that you used previously. You said uh, it's taking me time to unlearn, really unlearning something. I think it takes a lot of work, but it's so amazing once you do it and once you get past that point, because then you really grow. You really grow as a person. You are finally developing yourself. And I think it's magical, no? Don't you think so? Absolutely. I love the word magical. And, and something else about a learning is, uh, this is my personal um, attitude towards life. I am a lifelong a learner, a student, and I'm also every single day, I practice self-awareness. I have time in my day, every single day in my journal, and I always check in with myself. I always ask myself, why did I re react like that? 
like because that there is i think this is something that you know that is this um um limiting uh, um kind of a stereotypic idea of confidence that you get confident and you like on point 24 7 but it's not, <laughs> it's not so like true. that right like you this is how i teach it and being a confident woman means that you are humble you practice humility you practice self-compassion and you also understand that if you felt bad about something there is a reason and when you follow this reason you're like hmm, okay this person caused me to uh, i or more like i felt a certain way why did i feel like that is there a part of me that needs more love is there a part of me that needs more attention is do i have a need in my life that hasn't been fulfilled and when we practice self-awareness this is where confidence is so important because when you show up in your day with this mindset that everything works for you yes. including yes. the moments when you feel doubt they are there for a reason because otherwise life would be very boring if everything was la la land right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it's it just it, it's that's that's the the beauty of being human the magic like the ability to see magic everywhere and to see magic in the mundane. And, and this is this is why some people were able to thrive during the pandemic and some people were not. Because the people who were able to thrive, they knew how to find the positive, how to take advantage of on a very unpleasant situation. Because there is nobody out there who was like having the time of their lives in isolation, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is this is why again confidence is so important because you know okay so how can I show up for this inconvenience with the intention to make it work for me and I know a lot of people including myself I was actually able to triple my revenue not that it matters that much but again it's that mindset of like how can I use this in my advantage and in, in not in a way that you know we are trying to take advantage of everything of course but um when i said advantage i how can i always practice this like inner child's curiosity to, to life and be flexible oh my gosh that is so beautiful and that is so deep you know self-awareness self-awareness yes. is the massive and just being aware and appreciate yourself and appreciate your present your present moment and where you are it's so powerful anna maria really so about this concept of self-awareness, can I ask you where you learned it and what helped you implement it with your clients? Wonderful question. You're so good at asking very interesting questions. Uh, self-awareness is really one of my favorite words, as I said. Uh, so again, very quickly, uh, just to go back to what I said earlier about this uh, research that I did. So it, it was actually before that. So I started practicing journaling. Uh, of course, you know, Louis Hay, <laughs> yes. the affirmations, yes, everything. So um, I started using positive affirmations as a way of uh, uh, self-awareness uh, when I think it's 2014. Yeah, 2014. This is when I started. And every day I was writing in my journal and I was, I was using positive affirmations. And it, there was a positive affirmation that like would like cause me to feel like self-conscious like for example this affirmation again i am enough so i'm gonna write down i'm enough and then i'm going to practice self-awareness do i believe a hundred percent that i'm enough and if i don't believe a hundred percent how can i believe a hundred percent where in my life i wasn't feeling enough and then i was starting to brainstorm and ask myself questions and then I started to learn about the concept of metacognition, emotional regularity, and uh, again, Eastern philosophy. So this is how I really uh, dwelt into the whole idea of self-awareness with meditation, because meditation really helps us to dive within and practice self-awareness. And it was so interesting because at the time I remember I was looking up to my, to my meditation teachers and they were talking about like the ability to, to be like, uh, you know, to empty your mind and be in the moment. And I found it so interesting. I couldn't do it at the time, but I found it so um, in inspiring to think that it was possible to get to a point yeah. when you can practice like full presence. So I kept doing meditation. I kept learning about it. And there was one very blissful time in my life. I actually really wanted to go through like, uh, like a ceremonial ritualistic cleansing, if you wish. So I did like a 
uh, long cleanse, and I had a lot of junk in my body at the time. And again, I want to um, um, uh, insert very quickly that this is what I'm so passionate about health because physically I've always been around this weight. So it's not a, it's not that I was, you know, heavier or something like that. It was like, I felt heavy, which is completely different. <laughs> yes. So yes. the cleanse wasn't, you know, some sort of like a fat cleanse or something. I just wanted to feel <laughs> yeah, about myself. So anyway, so I did this uh, cleansing with meditation. I was going, I was doing earthing. I was going in the park and just kind of looking at the trees and absorbing their energy. I was uh, going through all the chakras. And I'm, by the way, I'm rushing through all this. This everything that I've done is, is of course, is long. This took uh, a lot of time. But anyways, so during this process, I was journaling a lot. I was journaling about everything I could possibly think of, and I was reading books and I was like, you know um using some of the quotes there or just kind of ask myself different questions and I was really I really wanted to heal my commitment issues I was a commitment pho phobic like I was the worst like I would go I would date I was dating like only unavailable people that were like very attractive but then I was like yeah I'm done with that so yeah I was really <laughs> yes. really bad at relationships I'm and laughing I because that was me Yes, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, it happens so often, you know, and it comes back. I think the root of that is also the root. I think it has to do with something that happened in the past that then hinders your ability to have a good relationship with the with the possible partner that you may have. Mm -hmm. So you keep attracting unavailable people. You keep Absolutely. attracting somebody that's going to leave soon or somebody when you have to leave soon or something like that, you know. But yeah, it's so interesting that you touch on that on that particular subject because I'm super interested in knowing how you got over it because now you are in a in a relationship for a little while, aren't you? Yes, you know, with the love of my life. Yes. Oh, so sweet! I love it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, that that's why uh, if you go on my website, this is the the slogan that uh, I I help women to have it all: the excellent health and uh, uh, the loving relationship and the fulfilling career. I really believe yeah. that every woman deserves to have it all. So anyways, it, during this time, I also started to study the attachment theory. And again, it's tied to childhood, as you said. And, and uh, you know, when people, it's so interesting because again, uh, this uh, idea that the opposites attract is true, but it's also can be very damaging because usually an avoidant attachment style will be attracted to you an anxious attachment style. So one is codependent and the other is too independent. So there is like this uh, talk of war and one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And again, I have I have a free webinar about that if anybody's interested. Uh, how to attract a high value partner online and avoid the traps of modern dating, yes. Uh, I saw that one. Oh my goodness, so good, so good. Oh, By the so way, good. whoever's watching this interview, you guys need to join Ana Maria's email list because she's amazing. She really has some super interesting subjects that will help you like nothing else will in this world. So yeah, after that commercial break, I would like to <laughs> carry on with that, with our lovely conversation. <laughs> You know, sometimes I like to joke that like sometimes no one I film a video and I will insert like a promotion of some sort. I'm like, you know what? I'm sponsoring my own content. So I'm paying for my own advertisement. Yeah, so during this time, again, I really wanted to, um, to, to unlearn all of these patterns. And something that I forgot to mention was that when I was doing this research, uh, there was, a, I remember it so well that I was in my mentor's office and I am not the person to cry very much, but I broke down in tears. I don't remember what triggered me. I think it was some, something like uh, during this research, maybe it was one of like the interviews that I did. I don't remember, but I broke down in tears and I realized that if I don't fix my issues, I would end up alone and I would end up feeling uh, unloved and lovable and I was like no <laughs> I am not going to end up like that um, so this is when it started and I'm so glad that even before I studied any coaching methods I've always had the mindset of a, of a winner a growth mindset like I've always took responsibility to be in control of my life and this is this is why I'm so grateful for my mom who is 
very, very successful and she's endured a lot of hardships. So I'm so happy that she was always so supportive of me and oh. she's super amazing. So anyways, during this- yeah, What an amazing role model. Yeah. What yeah. an amazing role model, your mom. I mean, you're explaining her story briefly, but it sounds like she, she's been going through hard stuff, but in the end she succeeded, you know, she's succeeding and she's thriving to life. So what an amazing role model to have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I have another video again, uh, children copy their parents. It's so interesting that the universe sent me two completely opposite models, like my dad and my mom. And like my mom, she's like an angel, really. She's the most positive person I've ever met despite everything she's been through and it's not my um you know it's not i don't want to talk about her life here but she's been through a lot again and she endured the marriage with my dad and so forth so i am so uh, grateful that i had the uh choice to choose between ended up like my dad or you know following the steps of my mom and as you mentioned earlier it's so common for unfortunately unfortunately it's so common for women to attract a partner who resembles their dad, even if their dad was not a good example. So I was very conscious of that. And that's why I was so afraid of relationships because I was so afraid of ending up in a toxic relationship. So I was, was just like, I'm going to leave the relationship before anything happens. So I'm not hurt. But I wasn't realizing that it was a self-defense mechanism. mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so long story short, it's again, it's a long period, but if there was one thing that really helped me was this curiosity, self-awareness, meditation and, and daily work and really reading because every, every single person, that's something very important, uh, to you know, to mention that every single person, that's why I talked about different personality types, that every single person has a different learning modality. Some people are kinesthetic learners, some people are auditory learners, some people are visual learners. Yes. And some people learn best from uh, from others. Like they learn best from interviews like that or from working with a mentor or a coach. Other people learn from their own journey, but it's so important to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. As long as you're learning, it's- You're growing. Yeah, you're growing. But I think it's, every single person would benefit from working a, with a coach or a mentor at some point of their journey. Because as I always say, you cannot- see everything when you are in the picture like sometimes you have to have someone to look at the frame and tell you okay what about that how about this yeah. it's so yeah. important to have a different perspective right and to just be open i mean it's i feel like it's so good when you listen to different points of view you don't mm -hmm. have to agree with everybody and you don't even have to implement what you're listening to but just being open being open to learn like I said, you, you can reject everything. You can be like, well, that's your truth and that's your truth and that's your truth. And I don't want anything to do with those truths. So I'm just going to stick to mine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to each their own, but it's good to learn. It's good to at least listen to other people's perspectives and points of view because everyone has a different one and everyone needs to be uh, well respected for their very own perspective because that's the reality, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like. <laughs> yes. 100% and something else again I, I really love how you put it that it's it's again it's learning and deciding what you want to take or what you want to disregard and after I, I finished school I actually forgot to mention that I really wanted to be to build my business and I had no idea because I had like I've always been in humanities I've into I've been into creative writing since I was a child so I've always been into humanities and creative writing so I had like zero practical knowledge <laughs> <laughs> about money I mean I wish we studied about money because that's one of the most important things money management but I didn't so I had to learn and because at the time after I finished school I really had no money so I understand when someone says I don't have money because I was I've been there but that's not an excuse because after school I didn't even have money to buy books that was just so bad but I had a library card and I would go to the library every single week with a carry-on and I was taking like 30 books every single week. And I was turning like crazy. Like I was learning from successful people. I was learning how to run a business, how to be a leader, how to manage your money, how to actually go through the Amazing. mechanics of running a business, how yeah. I built my own website. I had no idea how to build a website, all of the things, because I didn't have the money to do it. So uh, the reason I'm sharing this is because 
everything in life is a skill and every skill can be learned and even Absolutely. if you have no money you have youtube you have google you have interviews like that there's so many people at least i don't know anybody who is successful who doesn't want to share like most of us really want to spread the good vibes <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, creative value content so people can learn as well, right? I find that amazing, Anna Maria, really, because there's no excuse. You don't have any money, you have to find a way. You must find a way to educate yourself to such a way that you can just keep going. Oh, sorry, I that's love my cat, by the way. I'm a cat person. <laughs> Yes, my dear darling, we've been talking for 50 minutes and it feels like five, but yes, yes. <laughs> I know you do have other obligations coming up here soon. So I think this is a good time to wrap it up. But before we do, I would just like to ask you, what would be your number one thing that you would advise to anybody watching this interview and feel like this feeling uh, kind of like lack of confidence, like they don't know if they're going to make it? Like, what would you like to advise to them? Words of wisdom from Ana Maria. First of all, if you made it 50 minutes, thank you so much for watching. And something <laughs> that I want to yes, uh, something that I want to share uh, is again based on uh, uh, my client success stories. Something that I found, I've been doing this for a couple of years, as I said. Uh, with confidence, you have to look at the bigger picture because confidence, it in, at least in my work, it incorporates three modalities: uh, psychic or mindset mm -hmm. and then somatic or body language oh and how you feel in your body and interpersonal how you communicate your needs how you set healthy boundaries how you remain assertive and um, compassionate Amazing. so my, my yeah my final um recommendation if you wish is to practice self-awareness and see where in your life you may be confident but not unshakably confident. Because very often I see women, they say, I am confident in that area, but I'm not so confident in my relationships. So it's very important if you are, you know, dedicated to be unshakable confidence, to really look at the big picture and also to replace judgment with compassion and to tell yourself, I can be very confident in my body, but I don't feel confident expressing my needs. So how can I uh, again, this is NLP coaching. How can I source from what is already true? This is a very good uh, way of practice. learning. Hmm? Yeah, I love that practice. Yeah. Just asking yeah. yourself, it seems like your higher self just comes and gives you all the answers while you sleep or while you meditate. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so this is the final thing is to always uh, think of something that is already true for you. Like the one positive thing you believe about yourself no matter what, and then draw from this emotion and tell yourself, well, if I can do that, I can do this. And when you draw an anchor from this place of already existing confidence, you can just branch out and blossom until you feel so good that life is, feels, um, it feels your no new normal. Like anything less than feeling joyous is unacceptable. This is when you know you don't shake people. <laughs> I agree with you. Anything less than feeling joyful and happy is unacceptable. I love it. <laughs> Ana Maria, well, lastly, where can people find you? Uh, thank you so much for this interview. It was so amazing. I had so much fun. Uh, Lunavoda.com. I have a lot of articles. And if you want to join Fantastic. my email list, you can do that. And also Lunavoda Coaching is my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm That's also it. on social media. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic, Anna Maria. Well, once again, thank you so, so much for your time, for your kindness, for your knowledge, for your wisdom, and of course, for your energy, your purpose, your mission, and your vision, helping this world to become a better place, one person at a time. Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you, my dear. Well, enjoy your afternoon, and we'll see you in a different one, yeah? Thank you so much. It was so much fun to connect with you. No, it really was. You're amazing. We'll talk soon. Talk to you soon. Bye, Ana Maria. Bye.